Welcome, welcome to the fifth episode of the live stream of the More Creek Fishing Adventures. Got a really good guest today, and it's a guy that um, has a unique channel. Like, um, I know my channel is kind of creek fishing and stuff, and this guy does a lot of creek fishing, but it's a lot of it's totally different than me. Um, I'm sorry for the later start. Like I said, I, this is only the fifth one, so a lot of people are new to this. If you are new, I'm trying to do a live stream every Tuesday night. It looks like the night I'm going to try to do. Now, if I'm traveling, I probably won't be able to do it, but I'm going to try to do it every Tuesday night. I wanted to do it 8 o'clock, um, hopefully 9 o'clock. Maybe 9 o'clock is better, but uh, we actually had church service tonight. Um, we had a guest preacher in, so it was a little different. And um, I got back a little bit later, but I live like five minutes away from my church, which is awesome. And um, I'm like five minutes, <coughs> sorry, five minutes away from the, that's where the school is, where I'll be coaching basketball. So that kind of makes it nice and easy. I'm right down the road from uh, when I go, have to go for practice. And that starts um, about a month from now, practice will start. And um, But I, I should be able to still do um, live stream through the, uh, through the winter, through basketball season. We don't have a lot of games on Tuesday, so most of the time they're other days. So we'll see how this goes. But uh, let's go ahead and get our uh, guest on here. I'm really excited. Welcome, the fish hawk. <laughs> hello, hello. What's up? How are, how is everybody? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Also, anybody got questions? Put them on there. We'll uh, we'll try to address them. I know um, a lot of the people that are watching this are gonna probably know both of our channels really well and know a lot of the stuff. And any questions or anything, we'll try. If it's a specific question about something, we'll try to get to it um, best we can. But um, yeah, last week I we we planned to have <laughs> fish hawk on and uh, it just didn't work out. But that's all right, because I know everybody knows that just the different things are happening and um, it's easy to let things happen. But uh, tell, hey, how's it going? What's going on with you right now? Well, it's going great. Um, uh, temps are dropping. Trout fishing is yeah. turning back on. It's been kind of honestly really slow with all the heat that we've been having uh, as far as trout fishing goes. Um, but we've been getting a lot of rain and the uh, water temps are dropping. Uh, it's getting cool at night, and so the trout, and especially the brown trout and brook trout, are about to start spawning and all that good stuff. So, yeah, it's looking good. So I didn't know that. I didn't think about that. They spawn in the fall? Yeah, the brook trout and the uh, brown trout both spawn in the fall, and the uh, rainbows spawn in the spring. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's crazy because, yeah. like, the, bro the brook are native to here, you know. I mean, right. I know you know, but, like, it's crazy that they're real similar to the brown. But then yeah. I figured the brown and rainbow would be more similar, but I, I don't know anything about them. But yeah, and like there's the whole thing with funny. the brook trout. There's the whole thing with the brook trout not even being a real trout. You know, like they're a yeah. char per se. Right. So it's pretty interesting stuff. Speaking of speaking of that, that that that's a whole other subject. But I've been I've been like really um, like looking into and listening to a lot of podcasts on Alabama spotted bass and Kentucky spotted bass. I don't know if you've like know anything about those. They are. Mm -hmm. Two different species, but they are like identical. Like about, I mean, they're a little bit different in their behavior, just slightly. But like everything about us, else about them is identical. Like they they look identical, they act identical, they get this, you know. But they're two different species. I'm like, how is that even possible? Like that yeah. that just. So I'm always curious about fish and just, you know, how one fish differs than another, how they're similar, and stuff like that. But so uh, so you're so you're getting ready to go on a trip. Are you going to talk about that, or are you are you trying to save that? Oh, no. Yeah. So tomorrow, tomorrow I'm supposed to leave for Florida. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, never been to Florida before. It's oh, wow. going to be a whole different ball game. Um, plan on doing some fishing for sure. I don't know if I'm going to be doing any saltwater fishing, but I definitely want to hit those canals, catch some of those like pretty exotic species. And uh, I'm pretty excited after watching some of your videos from down there. It looks a lot of fun going to take like a light you know like a six foot light rod um a 1000 size reel and i guess maybe some spinners some little yeah. jigs some crankbaits i don't know but we're going to catch something uh yeah get ready to get hung up a lot on yeah. from fish from fish uh what's it called peeling out drag because i tried fishing light tackle yeah dude those fish are strong and there's a lot and there's so much like uh, i guess lily pads and stuff Okay. So I kind of I kind of went to my heavier bass stuff. Okay, like you you hook a two pound, a two pound a peacock bass or an mm -hmm. Oscar. Those yeah. things are there's they're so everything is so strong. It's like every you know because there's it's I guess warm water, but right. 
and you're on for a fight with light action. Like you, right. you'll you'll learn really quick that you better have some room to play them in. Yeah, and so uh, they, I, they're just. Would you suggest me uh, taking a different uh, approach with that? Because I I have the the six foot light uh, packed with the six pound test four carbon. One thousand. That'll size. that'll catch fish, but you're gonna have a anything big is just gonna take off and just probably drag. break or yeah break or something. Maybe. Um, I was using, but like I started, I was using like a, my medium bass rod, and I felt underpowered. I, I started using like my medium heavy. Wow, for most of them because right. like what, what kind of uh, line was you using? Mostly braid. I, I, I've kind of gone to braid for a lot, but like if you're using, you know, ten to twelve pound line, I think you're fine. But the peacock bass have really aggressive like lips or whatever it is you know um yeah. so they're real real strong and it's it in like they're all over and like you, you can catch little ones are fine but if you catch like a two or three pounder those things just got so much power and they just dig and they'll just wrap you around something really fast okay well um, but I'm if you're some of those some of those canals are wide open and you're fine yeah. but it just depends on where you're at okay well that's good but, to know i appreciate that because i might have to uh throw something extra in the, <laughs> the bag before i leave just for that my best lure, and this is what guys down there told me, and then it, it turned out to be true, is a jerk bait. But okay. like like a jerk bait, just fast. Like what? twitch, 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 uh, twitch. It's crazy how of, fast they hit stuff. So you're working it um pretty close to the surface and you're giving it a lot of action. Yeah, just just action. Most everything's not real deep. So if you're fishing okay. off the bank and a lot of those canals, you know that yeah. It's not like you're not like they drop off. Everything, you know how flat it is. So it's different. Everything's it's just a different world. <laughs> like yeah. I went down there. I remember one of the weirdest things was when I went down there, it rained all night and I'm thinking, Oh, it's going to be muddy flooded the next day. Nothing. Everything looks exactly the same because wow. it doesn't, it doesn't flood and get muddy because there's no runoff. Everything's flat and the water just rises. <laughs> okay. So it's like a whole nother thing to cool. think about. Yeah. But the rain, they love the rain and it doesn't, it doesn't like nothing affects anything. It just, some of the fish are hungry all the time. Yeah. Uh, the only thing affects them is cold. If it gets cold, that's what affects them. Uh, shut them down. Yeah. What would you, as far as the jerk bait goes, you said that's your number one lure for down there. Like, what kind of size and pattern did you think uh, was the most effective? I I did. I tried several, and I had several. They bent the hooks out. Like, wow. They're they're super strong. But it, um, and with the jerk bait, if they take you and wrap you around something, your jerk bait gets stuck. Okay. And you can't go, you're not going in the water to go after it. So nah. at least I'm not. So that's nah. a whole nother thing. I had a couple, like I lost a bunch of jerk baits cause they would, they would hang me up and I'm like, I'm not going in there to get it. I mean, <laughs> nah, and, uh, I'm not going in there. <laughs> I stood on the banks, like pretty close to some sketchy areas, but like, I think all the locals are like, they don't care really. They're pretty used to alligators and everything, but you just gotta be on the lookout. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think like, from what I've seen, it doesn't really matter the size, but like, like it doesn't have to be big, two, three inch jerk bait. Two, three inch. But yeah, just, just your normal. But like, the faster I worked it, the more bites I got. Okay. Which, it just blew my mind. Um, especially the peacock, the peacock and largemouth in there. But they're like peacock, Oscar, um, the sick, any kind of cichlid, all the cichlids in there. They're all thick, they all weigh like a pound. <laughs> Like even those small like cichlids are like a pound. They're just so solid, and you just don't know what you hooked into. So I'm really excited to see how you do. But the thing is, I've talked to a bunch of other guys. I've, I've told people, go, you know, I'm like I catch fish like crazy, and they're going down there like I couldn't catch anything. I'm like, every time I went, I caught fish. It was the only times I didn't was like there's so many different canals. Like if you find one that the water's not flowing, like it's like it's like canal, canal, and some have like waters that go like from this one's a little bit connect, higher than this one. Connecting. So yeah, if there's water flowing, there's fish hungry. If you find one that there's no water flowing, then maybe there's not as many, but... Okay, so look for flowing water and, and maybe the canal with the water like being dumped into is maybe the better one versus the one that's like being emptied. Yeah, if um, like I didn't fish a lot of the bigger canals in Florida that they're long and calm. That, that's, that point I sent you, it's like right on the edge of the Everglades. From like there... You could drive like 50 miles and it's just nothing but straight through the Everglades. It's so cool. But there's like all these pull offs all along the way okay. that you can see where people pull off right on the side of the road. And there's right. just little canals that connect to other canals. Okay. And yeah, it, it's, it's wild. It, it's like it, those, those bit. Do I? Endless fishing. Yeah. Those videos <laughs> have been, um, 
I've I've done like my best every time I've gone. Wow. Like they they do they've always got more views than my other videos. That's awesome. Because because it's usually like a title like canal fishing for crazy fish or for something Absolutely. like and people just love that. Yeah, like I just yeah. pull off the side of the road, started fishing. Canal fishing for anything that bites. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and people love to hear like see videos from Florida, just the, all the craziness going on. Cause yeah, you never know what you're gonna reel in, right? Yeah. It is uh it is interesting. But yeah, somebody let me see here. Somebody asked this. What does it say? If you're catching Oscar, you need to take an even plier and bend the barbs flat into the hook. Uh yeah, maybe to get the hook out. But us Os- Oscars are this they're so cool. Like when you, once you see them with those big old red spots, they're so beautiful. But you can it's like a bowfin. I know you've caught some bowfin, I think. Uh, uh, maybe similar to snakehead. Long, like you can't time, you can't hold on to them. They're so muscular. They just like <laughs> yeah, they just like jump in your hand. Yeah. But um anyway, I, I'm excited to see how that goes. And um, but yeah, you, you can catch stuff on like trout magnets or little little swim baits or spinners and yeah, you can catch them about anything. Okay. Um it's really, it's just interesting. I, I, I think I caught a bunch on like Bobby Garland's and like little stuff. I was like, like throwing into like little pads and there's little fish. straight zone. Yeah. The thing is like some of those areas, that's what, that's what it, it just, it, it will never cease to amaze me how many fish there are in some of those areas. Like those, some of those areas where the waters are spilling through, people stay in there all day, catch fish, like all day. It doesn't like, oh, they stop biting. Just new fish right. show up. Wow. <laughs> it's wild, but. And then, like I said, some people struggle, but I don't know. I've always been able to find something. Like you, you'll you'll figure it out. You know how to do it. Yeah. Everything, but I'm all excited. Right. Well, well uh, anything you want to talk about before I ask you some questions here? <laughs> uh, I was just scrolling through the comments oh, yeah. here. Uh, what does this mean? Gish. Uh, I had one guy ask me okay. if I've ever fished Arkansas. Oh yeah. Uh, I've never fished Arkansas, but that would be a cool state to to do. Oh, that's where the um, White River is, right? Yeah, the famous White River for big browns. That's yeah. over there where the trout magnet guys are. I'd and, love um, to. I'd uh, love to go down there and try that sometime. I know Hardman, um, my buddy Hardman, fishing adventures. He's been down on the White River uh, several times in Arkansas, and he says it's really fun and a uh, chance to catch um, trophy brown trout. So. That might be on the list at some point. I've driven through it, like past the White River. I don't think I've ever fished it. If I when I go to Arkansas in those areas, there's so much just pristine smallmouth fishing streams. <laughs> it's like it's hard for me to not to just you can there's just places it's it's just endless. Like some of them streams and just you can just like a lot of it, you can just drive through and find a place. And there's and they're all they're so beautiful and just rocky. I, there's there was one, I can't remember which one it was. It's one of the famous ones. There's a few. They're like one of the scenic rivers, and like the the gorge, the size of the gorge that this river goes through. You know how it's like those rivers that have like that. They're all like a gravel. It's all gravel. Yeah. It's just it. It was just like so wide and like just huge gravel bottom, and like yeah, you you think you're the only person that around. I mean, there, there was like a road somewhere, but like it it was pretty cool, and they got some beautiful smallmouth. But, yeah, that'd be. I love those uh, mountain streams or rivers that flow through like a deep valley and got the big rocks and the overhanging cliffs and all that sort of thing. Yeah. And, uh, I really like that type of uh, landscape when I'm fishing. I know. Somebody said, um, which I would love to do. Where do you go? Actually, take you uh, to get a Coosa bass. Yeah. Tennessee Creek Angler. Awesome name, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I've never caught a Coosa bass. If you ever come down here, are they, yeah, are they, we talked they about some stuff. I know it's hard to schedule trips. Like I'm just now trying to get a trip to go back out to um, North Carolina. I've been want, I've been. It's, it's just hard to do trips. Um, yeah, that's that's really something we can talk about as even as YouTubers, we can do kind of what we want. But <laughs> it, 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 it's like it's not like it's just oh yeah, I'm going to go here, going to go here. Yeah, you got a plan thing. I know your your Florida trip. This is the first time you've ever gone, so it's like exactly. It's uh, it is pretty cool. But yeah, I I would definitely love to get him down here and. Do some kayaking trips. That's what I love. I like we all we got some great kayaking rivers, and then we got all kind, we got a lot of different stuff. Um, and a guy like you that likes catching all kinds of stuff would be it's, it's perfect for it. Oh yeah, but and you got like area. you got all, there's all kinds of trout places around here that I don't even go to. Yeah, I was gonna say Tennessee like, got some really good trout fishing. Yeah, 
All right, hey, uh, so tell us, um, tell us like who you are. Yeah, uh, I want to know, like, just kind of a rundown, like how you got started fishing, and then how that led you into a YouTube, how to starting into YouTube, like kind of, kind of that. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I got started fishing probably before I could walk. I got a picture of my dad holding me in like a backpack while he's fishing. So, like, I was brought up, you know fishing all the time he took me fishing all the time took me to trout derbies uh to the farm pond to catch bluegill and largemouth um fished a lot of stock trout streams growing up and yeah just um i did play a lot of sports through uh middle school high school and that took up a lot of time i still fish some though um just not a whole whole lot but then uh, i went to college didn't play any sports and so I had, you know, time for fishing again. And so I got back into it pretty uh, heavily and then got a GoPro for Christmas one year and then decided to start, you know, throwing the GoPro on the chest when I went. And I was like, you know, heard about YouTube and I was like, I really like, you know, videoing, um, taking pictures of fish that I catch, uh, the scenery, just capturing everything. And and so, yeah, I just started doing it like that. And it, yeah, it kind of the trout fishing videos. I did a couple of trout fishing videos and they kind of, some of them took off and did pretty well and got lots of views. And, uh, yeah, that's, I guess that's the, sh so, so you got, so someone <laughs> you, like, you just got a GoPro, like, Hey, why don't you film your fishing? Like did you, did you already do what you do now? Or are you kind of, did you more, I know you kind of morphed into more trout as you right. did YouTube, but yeah. you, you already went out and fished a lot or, did, uh, yeah. did videoing push you to like fish more? No. Um, yeah, I would say that when I started videoing, it just kind of added something to it and made it maybe more fun. I don't know yeah. if it's more fun or not, but it, it did feel, I don't know. It was enjoyable to, to be able to go back and watch, you know, what you did and um, what you caught and just, you know, be able to uh, have that memory. And so, you know, anytime I went fishing before I videoed on GoPros, I always, you know, took pictures with my cell phone if we caught a big fish and that sort of thing. So it was cool to just look back and uh, and have that memory. And then the video is um, just even better than pictures. So it was really enjoyable uh, for me to video it and be able to watch it again and share it with people. Did, were there people that you knew that you were sharing stuff with at first or did you just kind of think, I'll just share this for whoever wants to see it. Um, I think I way back I had Facebook and I would share pictures of fish that I caught on Facebook. But other than that, I didn't really share anything until I started putting it on YouTube. But yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't really. Uh, pretty much my first video that I ever made just went straight to YouTube. Didn't even show anybody else. It just went right on YouTube. <laughs> just dove yeah. right in. Yeah, I kind of had the idea of making videos like probably six months or a year before I started doing it. But when I started, I was like, I'm going to do it. Like I had to come to the point where I'm like, yes, I'm going to do this. And it, you know, and it, it was the same way. Like it kind of made me want to go explore more and push me to go further. These some of these because I had already gone on all these little trips and adventures where I'm like, this would be really cool to show somebody. And then when I start videoing, I'm like, oh, I, I want to recreate that. I want to do. I want to show this. And then of course it takes a while to like figure out how to make a good video and stuff like that. And when, when did you start? Like what year where did you kind of start making videos and were you consistent at that point or? Um, I, I want to say it was like, I think it was like September, 2016 when I started like, posting, yeah. posting videos. And some of the first videos I ever posted was just me like wading, like standing in the Potomac river, like catching like little dink smallmouth bass. Um, but then I was like, you know, I knew going into it that it was going to be hard work. And like, I knew that I was going to have to be consistent. I knew I was going to have to post a lot of videos. And um, so I just, the first, I'd say the first few months, I didn't take it too seriously. I just tried to post when I could and fish when I could. But then I was like, I put my mind to it that I was going to post one video every single week. And yeah. so I, st I stuck to that. I stuck to one video every single week for a long, long time. I might've missed one week here well, or there yeah. when I first started out in the first few years, but I was like, I was very consistent. And I think that's probably the number one um, factor 
uh, for having a, like a successful YouTube channel is to yeah. be consistent and post a lot of videos. I, I, when I when I started, I like I didn't I didn't post any videos for like the first two winters. I didn't even think people fished in the winter. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I didn't really. I was like, uh, but once I started fishing more, I, I realized you can catch a lot of fish in the winter. And it kind of let that's what like YouTube like led me to learn more. Like yeah. I, I I had this idea of what I was gonna do, then YouTube like kind of pushed me to do some other stuff, and I'm like, wow, it's like I, all the stuff I didn't even know I would learn about and come across from it. That's that's what's kind of crazy about it is like you don't you don't know anything about it till you start doing it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, you just gotta learn. Yeah, you just gotta do it to to learn and see what it's all about. Yeah, you uh, but. You have, uh, I was looking it up, you have like 311 videos or something like that, maybe more now. But that's not actually, you don't have a ton of videos compared to a lot of guys your size. Like I have, I have seven or 800 videos, I think. Wow. Um, and I, 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 I've been posting a lot because I, I do a lot of simple ones. You know, I can do simple videos where I just go out and catch some bluegill and stuff. And I know your videos take a lot of work. Like when you, your videos that you go out, these trout streams, I know you drive a lot and, like it, it can take a lot of work to get those and then but you do a really good job with them with underwater releases and and all that, that i cannot get a good underwater release <laughs> every time I, i'm like i'm gonna do a fish hawk underwater release and i I'll, I'll look back at it i'm like i didn't have the fish on the camera <laughs> uh yeah that's uh it, sometimes it just depends on the fish um some of the some of the trout i've noticed that the trout tend to be a little more uh, they'll swim away out of the net or they'll swim out of your hand a lot slower and more calmly versus like a small mouth or a bluegill or a large mouth. Like those yeah. fish, when you let them go, they take off instantly. And um, yeah, so the trout are one of the species that seem to be the easiest to do the uh, underwater releases for, which I mostly do trout fishing. So it's good for me. <laughs> I was, I was going to say this, <laughs> I was going to say this last week and then, um, so I, I was going to say this about, about your channel, how it's different. So a lot of the people that are trout fishermen are kind of fly fishermen and, right. and where you're different is you mainly, you know, spin fish as I, you would say. And, um, and then I watched you fishing with Hardman fishing and you're fly fishing. I was like, Oh, there he goes. That's it. He's over. No, <laughs> I, I, I think you're, uh, I think spent your spin fishing and you probably think the same makes your channel way more relatable and probably has helped your like your viewership grow yeah more than because sure. I, I know there's lots of good fly fishing channels oh yeah there's tons and, of fly i don't fishing. think it's as relatable to the average person yeah I, i've seen i've seen several comments on my channel uh saying stuff like don't ever go fly fishing or don't ever start <laughs> fly fishing because you're like one of the only people that spin fish for trout and we like we like spin fishing for trout but you know it's just that's what I uh, grew up doing mostly, and that's what I enjoy. I, I do like fly fishing, though. I had a blast with Hardman uh, yeah. catching uh, native brook trout on dry flies. I mean, it's really fun to see uh, a little native brookie come up and hit top water in a like a gorgeous mountain stream. It just feels like you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're kind of in a different world. There's huge boulders and waterfalls, and even though they're little fish, they're so pretty. All the colors on them and stuff like that, and it was, it was a lot of fun. I don't, you know, I still mostly do spin fishing, but I can definitely see myself doing some fly fishing every now and then. Yeah. For me, it's just more of a hassle to like, to go do it. I don't know, but I actually got, I got my, I'm going tomorrow. <laughs> um, I'm going tomorrow for, uh, my buddy. Like I, the kind of one of the guys that got me started around here when I first moved here, he does heat and air. <laughs> he still works at that company, but we're going to go tomorrow. He, he, had, he had just messaged me and um, fly fishing for, uh, we're going to try to catch yellow perch on the fly. And there's this lake near me that it's loaded with, with them. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And um, I don't know why he wants to try this. I'm like, that sounds fun. <laughs> it sounds like worth trying. It's um, it's real shallow lake. So I think I got a bunch of different lures. I got all this, all the fly stuff I have people sent me. I got a ton of stuff people sent me. So uh, I think I'm just going to drop some, I don't even know what they're called, but some kind of sinking lure and it's usually five or six feet deep sink it down there because those perch kind of stay at the bottom you know yeah i don't know if they'll come up and hit anything off the top they might but i don't know a whole lot about yellow perch but i have caught some and they're really fun and they're really pretty fish 
I, I would say that they probably hit something, some type of fly. They're they're really aggressive as far as like when you catch it because I'll catch them like on bass lures and stuff around me, but um, but they they always seem to be on the bottom. But anyway, I'm gonna try to do it, and if not, I'm gonna have a I'm gonna try to do it on my kayak too. But if Ooh. not, I have a spinning rod with me. So <laughs> you gonna do be, you could do the stand up casting, or you gonna. I, I, think, I think all I have to do is just kind of toss it over to the side. Yeah, just like <laughs> they're, they're, yeah I'm not a, that's a well, nine foot well, rod. So all I got to do is just, just drop it over the side and yeah. let, it, let it drop down. Uh, I need to do it more. Or I don't know if I need to. I, I, it's one of those things I always think I want to try to do more. But I go to, I like going to so many different places. When I go to a new place, I, I, I don't want to be handicapped like right. as far as catching. So when I'm, when I'm at a new place, once I get – and that's the thing. I know a lot of fly fishermen are just kind of like they want a new challenge, you know. Right. They want they, like I and I might get to that point some point sometime where I'm like, ah, eh, it's too easy, or right. not too easy, or just like I've done this enough. I want to try something else, but I don't know. I maybe something I try better. And that's and I don't know. And that's another thing. You just got to be interested in doing what you're doing. Like I, I started kayak fishing a ton and like bass kayak fishing in tournaments and stuff. And that's not something I like. I ever thought I would be doing on my channel, and I've kind of brought my viewers over to that. Where I think a lot of them, if I was all that I was doing, they wouldn't be watching me. But since I kind of started in this, and I'm kind of doing this now, I think I've transitioned some of them over to it. But that's that's just a, your growth through um, as a YouTuber, and like you, you, yeah, you started. I started 2016, started making videos. That's what four, seven years, or six years, eight. Oh, eight right, years, six, six, six. six. six years? Yeah. yeah, over six. Yeah, at least six years, and that's it's a long time to do anything. You're you're even if you change or like some people, I'll do something different. They're like I used to do this. I'm like what? Well, you're never gonna do the same thing forever. I mean, you're always gonna change a little bit, but yeah. And I, um, I love fishing, like pretty much any type of fishing. So salt water, I'll I'll try it. I'll do it um fly fishing i definitely have tried it and enjoyed it i don't really think there's a whole lot of fishing uh that i wouldn't really enjoy it's just what do i prefer doing but i'd like to try it all or like you know yeah. travel and catch all kinds of different fish i don't really care what technique but i mean probably trout fishing with spinning rod is going to be my you know my favorite for the most part or what i do the most just because of where i'm at and that sort of thing yeah that, that I think that shapes a lot of us too. Like creeks is perfect for where I live and it's something right. I'm interested in, but there's just, I'm in the Tennessee Valley and there's all these creeks from all these Hills coming, you know, all like just draining into the Tennessee river. And it's just, it's, it's endless for me. Like, and then one Creek will be up in the mountains and it changes by the time it gets to the Valley. So it's like fishing two totally different streams. Yeah. Like the headwaters could be trout and then the tailwaters could be like a warm water fishery. Yeah. Like yeah, small. totally. Large yeah, mouth. for sure. Uh, and that's the thing. Is that's what's funny though. Like they'll go up in those trout streams, and you'll catch a few fish. There's not a lot of fish. the The warmer the the warmer it is, the more fish habitat those areas. Um. So sometimes it's like I'll go up and fish these areas. I'm like, man, that's a tough day. I caught like two fish. I go to the creek down the road from me, catch 15 fish in like <laughs> 20 minutes. You know, just little little stuff. But somebody asked me a question. Uh, who built your custom rod? Um, so I, I did have two rods built from a local, um, rod company in town. It's called Joe's custom rods. He's in Cleveland, Tennessee. Uh, I'm not sure if they ship them out or anything, but it's more of a local, local thing. Um, what does this guy say? Do either of y'all have the Daiwa Presso rod? I haven't, I don't know anything about that. Have you used that? Nah, I haven't. Why do so many fishers get locked on particular fish? Oh, ah, location, location, location. Yeah, maybe what their parents did or what somebody grew up doing. Maybe what's popular. Um, there's there's guys in um. Uh, so like I have gotten to travel some, and it depends. Yeah, you're right. Location. There's guys in um in South Georgia that I fish with that they they have red breast fishing uh like Tournament. um, tournaments. Wow. And I'm like, what? Like around me, <laughs> nobody even knows what a red breast is. Like they right. catch one, they call it a bluegill. Right. Like nobody cares. It's bass because I'm near Chickamauga Lake. It's all bass fishing. Um, you know, I mean, that's a, that's a, for sure. Like you know, also Georgia, like a shoal bass. People love shoal bass fishing in certain areas. 
if they live in a shoal bass area up north if people you know fish for pike all the time some areas where there's just pike everywhere yep but yeah right i don't know yeah you're right and it's and maybe it's just something what's fun or maybe what's fun to them or yeah what you enjoy most yeah as far as like the type of fish like certain fish fight harder you know if you like that and then the type of location that they're in if you like certain scenery if you like you know, if you like mountains and uh, big boulders and that sort of thing, you'd love trout fishing. Oh, engineer hooks up. Oh, where'd he go? He said he just got a uh, presser rod today. I have to see if he does a video on it. Uh, engineering hook sets. If you if you do it, you need to do a video on that. I haven't, if you have, I haven't seen it yet. Um, I think Ethan from Online Outdoorsman did one. I uh, I get a lot of comments where. Um, if I do do something new, I, I've gone and I've caught like some, I've caught, you know, fish from Florida, South Florida, peacock bass. I've caught, um, I've caught some pretty good sized catfish, like catfishing. I've caught, I've caught striper. I, I mean, not a lot, but this year I caught one that was like 30, 25, 30 pounds. This is a giant on a it's glide tough. bait. Um, every I time I catch, good, yeah. every time I catch a fish like that, people say, oh, you're ruined now. You'll never want to, you'll never want to go back to creek fishing. Right, and then the very next thing I want to do, let's go back to creek fishing. I want to go catch some tiny bluegill. Right, it's like that <laughs> satisfies me more than anything else. Like it's 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 what satisfies you too. That's another thing. I think that's why people like fly fishing so much. It, they get so much satisfaction in catching fish. I get so much satisfaction going and catching seven species from the same creek in an hour. I go there, boom, and there's a there's a creek that I was gonna go to today, but I had I had I made myself edit videos instead. I'm so behind. So, um, but I'll, I'll try to go there the, soon. I want to, I think I can catch like 12 or 13 species of fish in it. And I'm going to go with creek. it in one creek. It, it's wow. I caught nine the last time I went and I saw more. It's got, it's got such diversity. That's crazy. And it's like, it's in the, it's kind of in between these businesses and it's like this random spot. And yeah. It's a little creek that flows into a bigger creek. So it, all these little creek come up it. It's crazy. There's so many little fish in there. And the diversity in it, but uh, yeah, so fishing is it's definitely whoever what you want to do, what you enjoy to do, what what satisfies you. Some people like sitting on the bank soaking worms. And I'll do that every once in a while, but uh I like moving. You like you like moving too. Oh like yeah. you like so that's part of your fishing, I'm sure is like like you also said about the terrain, like you love the you know beautiful areas. But like right. moving, how how does that affect you? Just like from standing and to moving, how much different is that? Uh, well, like I always prefer creek fishing or stream fishing or river fishing versus like a pond or a lake, just because the scene. I mean, it depends on the size of the the pond or lake, but I just think that the rivers and the creeks are more enjoyable because it's just something different every time. Like where you have to cast, where the fish is going to be holding, um, just the the trees, the the rocks, everything's different as you move, you know, up or down the Creek. And it's just, you know, it's just nice to see something different and explore and discover new stuff. I was, um, that was kind of the que- a question I was wanting to ask you, but I asked somebody else about that. And, um, cause there's like, there's several guys. Um, there's a lot of YouTubers that are fish. There's a lot, a lot of fish. There's saltwater guys, there's bass guys, there's catfish guys, you know, everything, but something about small streams, and just going to them and fishing them is like, I, I don't know. It doesn't get any better that to me. Like, I don't even care if I'm not going to catch a giant fish. It's the wild fish surviving in these small streams, you know, growing in, growing up in those streams, living in those streams. And um, I don't know. Maybe it is just like the peacefulness too of it. I don't, I don't know. But also just like walking, just walking and exploring. Maybe you walk a mile or two of a stream. You got to see all this different terrain. Yep. And um, like I said, and every time you go back, it changes. I just did a video. Yeah. Uh, I think I put it out yesterday where I went to this Creek. I hadn't been in a year. I go back there and I weighed at least a mile and I didn't catch a fish for a mile. Like I, the last time I went there last summer and I, I caught so many fish. I, I don't know what happened. It's a, it's a stream that comes out of the Hills, out of the plateau area, beautiful, clear water. There's like, there was nothing. It was absolutely nothing deep holes nothing in them except chubs and you know usually if there's chubs there's there's no bass or nothing else uh there was a couple chubs 
I finally get to this one point, and for this next 100 yards, I probably caught like seven bass um, that were like 12 to 13 inches, like fat ones too. And that's, that's and, I, and, I, and I put like the first 10 minutes of the video, I didn't catch a fish. And I like never do that. Usually I can want straight to fishing. But I wanted to show like sometimes, it, that, and, that, and it was fun to me. It was fun to explore. I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop myself like walking down this creek. I had to find out where those fish were. It's just like I need to know where these are, and uh, I think that's that, can, that that exploration's so much fun uh, in a stream where if you are in a lake or a pond or something like everything looks the same almost, you know, more or less, but, yeah. So I, I think exploring is definitely to me. What's this say? Uh, the last what. Is, Favorite video about Johnson for the last minute. Oh yeah, yeah. So I'm getting into kayak fishing, uh, even though it's 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 weird for sure. I mean, the, the tournament stuff's weird. It's a whole. Have you done any tournament fishing? Um, I have not. Uh, I've done one tournament, and that was like before. That was like right when I started doing YouTube. I don't even know if I put a video, um, out of it. But yeah, just probably one time. I think is all I did. <laughs> Yeah. And it, it didn't go very well. <laughs> I I started watching some guys a couple, a couple years ago, and then like I saw them doing it, and I never I was always kind of guys like I'll never do a tournament stuff. That sounds dumb, but when I saw them doing it and I watched their videos, I was like, I want to try that. And you can like I'll still find these like little creek channels to go up out of this lake that like nobody else goes to. And I try to I'll do that. And it's still fun, but um, but but bass but bass fishing and me and for like. So the, the, the two, I, we did a two day tournament. The first day was good. I was catching a, 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 a bunch of fish. The second day, I only caught five fish all day. It was like a horrible day fishing, but I caught five good fish and I got six, six place out of, uh, 107 anglers. Wow. But like the pressure and like all that was, was really fun to, to deal with. Like, yeah. Like uh, the competitiveness. The, yeah. I, I missed that. Added a little bit to it. And I, I know you're a sports guy and that's the thing. Oh, if yeah. you, I think if you, if you find the right thing to get into, it, it brings back that competitive sports thing where you're like, I may not be as good as that guy, but today I'm going to try to beat that guy, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, no, yeah. I definitely see the, uh, the interest or what could, you know, the, how it could be more fun that way. <laughs> what is- you should do a fishing challenge. Lose your, <laughs> lose your shaves his beard for charity. <laughs> hey, I'm going to grow mine out a little bit more first. So <laughs> save it. We'll grow it out to the end of November. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Let's start over. That'd be funny. Ah, uh, yeah. He helped. Uh, I don't, he helped me out with some stuff there. Um. All right. Go. Let me go to another question. Right, I got a couple questions here. We'll run through. All right. Um. Let's see here. I wrote these out last week. I can't read my own writing. Um. We already got that. How you guys started doing YouTube? How you became a YouTuber? Oh, tell me. How long have you been like? Full time into it, and what led um, you to make that decision? Like, is that something you wanted to do? Um, oh yeah, definitely. or is it something that kind of grew into it? And you're like, I oh, yeah, might as well. Um, I kind of thought about it from pretty early on. Well, not maybe like the maybe not the first few months, but after yeah, I yeah. started, like my channel started growing, and like I was having a lot of fun doing it, and videos were doing well, and you know all that stuff, everything was going great. Then I was like, man, this would be you know. Of course, like I saw the Guggen squad and saw all those guys, one rod, one reel and saw what they were doing. And I was like, I want to do that. And so that kind of became like a little goal. Um, And so, yeah, that's what I was working towards. And I've been doing it since March of 2021. Yeah. So what's that a year and. Almost a half. Almost a year. Yeah. Basically a year and a half. So what, what, what's. So going into that, this this is kind of the next question for that. So it could be your whole YouTube or maybe this next this last year and a half. What mm-hmm. are some things that has that you've gotten out of it, or maybe it's things that have happened to you, like good things? We'll start out with some good stuff, and then like maybe something that that you've gotten out of it too that you don't like, or maybe it's aggravating or bad that's come out of you being a YouTuber and and uh, kind of full time YouTube also. So you're saying something that's that's like good. What? Yeah, what's something that that you did unexpected? Something unexpected that's like, like really good that's that's come out of doing YouTube, besides getting to do it for a little. Oh, bit. oh okay, okay. Uh, just doing YouTube in general, something. 
Um, one of the most unexpected thing from uh, YouTube is just meeting so many uh, awesome people. I think like, you know, like I met you and went fishing yeah. with you. I met John Hardman. I met one rod, one reel extreme Philly fishing um, one fish, two fish. I mean, the list goes on and on, like all the cool people you meet and like the different places you can uh, go and fish with them and, you know, just make friends. So that, I'd say that's probably like the most unexpected thing. It's just like, you just have a common interest with somebody and you're like, just automatic, like get along and have yeah. and be friends. And it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. That is, that is it's, it's so weird. Like when you first start out, you see these names, you're like, who are these people? Then you get to like, know these people. Right. And you're like, oh, okay. Just a normal dude. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly, exactly. Enjoys fishing and has the same interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what's something that's like a negative thing that maybe came out of YouTube or maybe, maybe, maybe something, maybe it's something while you're doing it full time that you didn't, that's a little harder than you thought or, or something like that. Um, I would say one thing about uh, being full time um, fishing you, on YouTube, you kind of got to go fishing whether you really feel like it or not. Sometimes I would say that's kind of, you know, I would lean towards that. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, you got the bad weather and you got just like stuff in general to deal with that, you know, you just got to kind of make it happen. Whereas before, you know, it's like you wake up and you don't feel like going fishing, you might go back to bed or, you know, if it's raining, you might go back to bed, but if you're doing it and you're making content and that's like what's paying the bills right now and stuff. So sometimes you just go and, you know, nine times, probably like 10 times out of 10, you go, you're like, man, I'm glad I came. I'm glad I went. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, but I would say that's probably one thing where it's just like, you don't, you know. Yeah. There's I, like a, a self motivation you have to be able to, you have to have to right. do this. Like I, um, I'm not like super self motivated, but I, I, you know, but, I want to, it's like, yeah, you're right. Like sometimes I'm like, okay, I'll go ahead and do it. And then I'm like, man, I'm glad I did this. Like you, yeah. you're, once you get into it, you enjoy it. It's not like the whole day you're, well, I'm I better catch it. some fish. You know, right. that comes across in a video. If, if you were like that, your videos will just drop. You have to be excited about what you do. Right. And, um, you know, and I think people can see that and stuff like that. But yeah, it is a thing where it's work. You know, it, it, it turns into, it's like, hey, yes, I get to do this. But also I have to do this also. It's not, right. I, it is work and I have to do mine. Mine for sure is just like the editing part. Like I, I don't want to do it, I, but once I start editing, I enjoy it. Um, it kind of like, I like I'm, but at the same time, the only, the, I guess the biggest part for me for like the down thing would be when I put out an awesome video and it like doesn't get any views <laughs> and I, I feel like I have so much work into this thing and I'm like, Oh yeah. But, but then you'll have a video that like, like it's a stupid video and it does awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's like That's sometimes the, one. the ones that you try the most and like put the most effort into do the worst. Like I went out to Wyoming and like caught like the biggest brown trout of my life and yeah. like spent all this time editing this video. And I was like super proud of it. And um, I was like, this video is just so awesome. And then like, it didn't like hardly get any views, but then I go like catch stock trout you know, out of a creek in my hometown with power worms or something. And it's like, it just blows up. Yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. I like looking at, I like looking back at like the money that a YouTube video makes. Like I'll, I'll do one and I'll go, I'll go back and look at old ones, you know? And I'm like, that video made me $150. I was like, I right. spent eight hours of fishing and four hours editing. Yeah. You know? And then I have one, I'll have some, like you said, I have some like my little Creek ones where I'm like, I kind of just stopped randomly. I wasn't even planning on fishing. Stop fish for an hour. Took me like an hour to edit. And that, that video made a thousand dollars or something like that. And you're like, yep. that's crazy. But it, it definitely, they, they, they'll even out for the most part. Um, let's see here. Tell me about your, uh, so I have one of your rods. So anything new with your rods or, and, or like any updates or you still doing that? Yeah, yeah, still doing the rods. Um, he just and tell people how they can buy. Tell tell us what it is and like if people are interested in buying one, something like that. All right, so um, so the fishhawk rod basically is just a rod that I designed. I picked out all the components of it, picked the color, picked see the logo, the grip, the reel seat, the the rod guides, the thread color, everything. I just kind of made it to how I wanted it. Um, I teamed up with uh, J and H Tackle in uh, in New York. And so, uh, he has like a, um, a tackle brand, 
Um, sort of like, I guess, Dick Sporting Goods has like a field and stream brand or like Walmart might have Ozark. Okay, yeah. Um, so J&H has Dark Matter, which is his uh, tackle brand. And so he it's kind of like a Dark Matter fish hawk collaboration on the rod. And he, he gets them and um, keeps the inventory and uh, you can buy them on his website, jnh.com. And then like um, a local um, tackle shop here close to where I'm from called uh, Jake's Bait and Tackle. They actually started carrying some, carrying some fish hawk rods, uh, which was oh, really cool. cool cause they're like yeah. 10 minutes from me. And um I just talked to Josh the other day at J and H the owner, and he says that he's working on getting um, the rods and the, um, the spinners that I have uh, in Dick sporting goods soon. So, I mean, that'd be really, really Dude, cool. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's really yeah. cool, man. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. That's, that's a dream I've had. I want to have like something with my name on it out there. Like, you know, a, re- a regular store where somebody doesn't even know who I am. Just comes by and like, Hey, what's this? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that'd be Who's really cool. Guy? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll try it out. I like his rod. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're you're you still have you uh are is there any um maybe future things to having a, a second rod design or anything? I know you're so yours is, it's a six foot light. Yes. Um, fast spinning rod. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, basically, I just like that's my favorite uh all around trout rod for like creek fishing and even smaller rivers. It works good. That's just like the um the action and the length that I, that I prefer and like, but, um, I do use a lot. I do use like a six foot six medium to medium light, uh, St. Croix rod for like small mouth, Mm -hmm. uh, on the rivers and stuff. And I really, really like that rod for just throwing tubes, Ned rigs, um, anything, but yeah, it's nice to have a little longer rod with a little more backbone for the smallies. So I, I could possibly come out with another model, uh, for small mouth or like just, you know, more of like a bass rod versus a, a, a light or a, an ultra light yeah. version for trout. Yeah. I like, um, for, for most of my ultra light stuff, I like the light also, but I, I like a little bit faster tip for the fishing I do compared to you. And, and that's just the difference between like, you know, if your trout fishing is different than a little different than like a lot of times, uh, you know, a bluegill fishing one or something different, just the hook sets a little different. You don't need as much flex. But that's that's why there there there's that's why I love all these different rods. Like I'm getting into like all the different sizes and actions and like being very specific for targeting certain things. You can really and then everybody has their own little thing like they that they like. Um some people like longer, shorter, different ones, but that's really cool. So I know you got the spinner. Uh do you yeah. have any other lures that, that um, like your name on it? I don't have any more lures at the moment, but I do work with um, Euro Tackle. The yeah, same tell company. us about that. Yeah, so Euro Tackle, um, yeah, they're just a, a tackle company that I work with at uh, Extreme Philly Fishing. He works with them too. Yeah. Uh, they make a lot of really, really cool soft plastics, like really small stuff that's great for like the multi species stuff, like creek fishing, like you do. It's good for trout, panfish small mouth and they, i mean they even have some bigger stuff too but i really think that they're like they're small soft plastics small jerk baits small crank baits are really really cool and catch a lot of fish and um i'm supposed to get a like a custom lure with him we're going to come out with i think like a soft plastic swim bait that's going to have it's going to be fish hawk um so that's pretty exciting and, and i've been talking to him lately he's supposed to send me um some drawings and some ideas of some things. So it's in the works. I I got an email from, I don't, I don't remember the name, but it was a guy. I don't know if it's, if there's like one guy that does your tackle, if it's a few. Yeah, it's one guy. Okay. I, I need to reach back out because I, I couldn't do anything at the moment, but I would, I really can't do a deal with them, but I would love to use some of their product because I, I know my, my, my viewers were, would, would benefit from that. Like that's right up my alley, you know, as far as the pan fishing and, and like multi-species fishing and um i definitely need to try some out because i, I want to start trying out other brands just especially brands like that that are like specifically for ultralight people and stuff like that like yeah, um, I, that's go ahead i also say I, I think you would really really you've never tried your attack was what you're no, saying right? yeah no i haven't I think you would like really i think you'd really enjoy it. i mean it's you know you like that helgramite from uh, nico yeah and they have like a um 
your attack has one called an Anna Septera, and it's kind of like a little Helgram. I saw that. That's <laughs> I want to try that. I, I saw yeah. that thing. I was like, dude, I need to, I need to use that. It, it slays. I've caught a lot of uh, trout on it and smallmouth and all kinds of stuff. We did. It's 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 pretty cool. I know a lot of people are here watching. So I, like, just to just to say this, like, I know I want to do these live streams and talk to guys like Fishhawk here for the my viewers on my channel. Like, th here's a guy that does a lot of. Um, you know, light action fishing like that anybody can do a lot of, you know, from the bank or waiting to stream. But also I want to bring up lures that my viewers would be interested in. Even if it's not, if it, even if it's not a, like a lure that I'm sponsored by or work with or, or have anything to do with, I am interested in all types of lures, especially when they're right up the alley of like multi-species. Cause I, I know I got a lot of fans that they just want to go to a Creek and catch fish. And, and like I said, around us, we got all kinds of sunfish and little bass and, but Euro, yeah, Euro tackle is something to definitely look into if you are looking into that. And I, I encourage people to try out all kinds of brands. Like just sure, yeah, there's so much stuff out there. Don't be oh, it's endless. Don't be dedicated to just one brand of fishing or something like that. Go go try this guy's this, this guy's this. And yeah. Um, absolutely. You'll have more fun that way. Like I, I have a contract with Pradco and it in um I work with those lures, but I'm not locked into only using and I, I wouldn't do a I don't think anyways unless they're paying me a ton of money i don't think i would lock myself into using only one brand or yeah, like one be umbrella because i just there's too much other stuff to, to try out there yeah there really is a lot and um and people are always coming out with new but that being said i get i don't know how if, how many messages you get i get messages all the time about these little companies the guys are starting up companies hey i'd love to have you try out my lures sure and that's that's really hard too though. <laughs> it's it's hard for me to like just try out other lures when especially when they don't have a few if they have a big variety to choose from i can look through it and be like i will i like that one that one right. fits me right um that's just i don't know i i i think about that a lot because i get i do there's probably people watching now that make their own lures or something like that and you know they want to you want to get somebody else using them to try to try them out or maybe to get some advertisement the, the thing i would say is if you are making lures and you want somebody to try it just send it to a YouTuber or somebody. Um, if I, I got lures over there, people sent me. Some of them I'll use. Some of them I might, I'll probably never use. But once we do this, we already get set in, our, set in a lot of lures that we use. But if there are people out there aspiring to grow or whatever, the best thing you can do is just send stuff out. That's that's what I always say anyway. Just send stuff out. If you if you use something in your video or you get something that you're like, you know what, I like this. I'm going to try it. And it, it turns out to be something you really use a lot or you, it, it could be waste or, you know, but anyways, I just think about that a lot. And I'm sure you get contacted a lot by people that are oh, yeah. trying to promote something. It could be lures, could be anything. Um, it's just weird to uh, like negotiate something, but if it just shows up in the mail, do you, I, do you have a PO box on your, uh, no, nah, I don't No, Okay. I did, but I, I don't anymore. Yeah. I, um, I'll get stuff every once in a while. Yeah. And I got some stuff recently. I got some like custom jigs, but I just like, I don't use jigs a lot. And then right. I, I'll get some custom this or that, you know, it's, um, but I, I want to try one. I'm going to try some of their stuff that people sent me, but somebody sent me this fly fishing stuff and I'm going to, I'm going to try it tomorrow. Hopefully catch some fish on it. All right. Yeah. I, I definitely wanted a couple memorable. We're already almost up to 10 o'clock. So I got a couple more yeah. questions for you and like anything, any questions you want to reply on? Oh, I wanted to reply to that guy. I think it was, um, where'd he go? Oh yeah. Engineering hook sets. What? No, it was, I think it was, he talked about fishing in the winter. And that is something that I noticed last year where, um, uh, I put out a lot of winter fishing videos last year and they, all, and they did really good, way better than I thought because, um, there is a lot of fishing content slows down as far as people putting out fishing content. So right. if you are putting out fishing content, you, um, there's less people watching probably, but there's also less out there to view. I, do you notice anything like that in your winter fishing videos? Do they do better or worse? Um, I would or have say, you ever? No, I always think winter fishing videos do do worse. Do worse for me personally. But normally, what happens is like the fall sometimes will be pretty decent. I, I guess because you know trout fishing gets kind of popular in the fall and the spring mostly. During the summer, it's really hot and most people aren't trout fishing in, anymore. They're they're, they've moved on to like smallmouth or like farm pond bass fishing or something like that. So 
the trout for my channel, the trout videos and videos in general just seem to do better in the spring and the fall and be like the winter seems a little bit slow and the summer uh, seems pretty slow too. like July, August, like the really hot times. Yeah. I, I used to think I knew when my like peak times were, but it, I feel like it's changed every yeah. year. Like it's a different moment that gets like more views than the other. I'm like, I don't understand, but like last year, my last year when I went down to Florida, yeah. like those, um, I posted, I went down into December, posted, I had like five videos from the trip, posted those throughout January and my January views were like really high. <laughs> People loved those and I, I didn't think they would do that good because they're posted in the winter, but so, I don't know. So when you was down in, what month did you actually fish Florida? Uh, it was in, I, I went during Christmas break for the school. The school had a Christmas, uh, their Christmas break. Okay. So I went like last week. It, it was like, I can't remember if I went before New Year's or right after. I think I went right before, I think I went like right after Christmas, like the day after and went that, that week, um, the week after wow. Christmas. And, um, it got cool. It was weird. The weather was like, you know, it's usually like 80 degrees all the time. Right. I mean, like all, all through the winter. So like, it was like hot a couple of days and then one day was cold. And then, like, when I left, I think it got cold. And the day in, um, so it was really weird. But this time I, I went, I actually did some brackish water fishing and I caught a couple snook just in like some random canal. I took my kayak with me the last time yeah. and that was really cool. So I went out in some of these canals and, um, just like, just to like, you know, there's so many canals. It's just like Lord. endless. And, um, it, that was pretty cool. And then I, I, I went back to some places that I knew were fish. <clears throat> and I caught I caught a bunch. I never I didn't catch anything big, but I, I had um I had one day where I went out in my kayak for like three hours. I bet I caught forty peacock bass. Like it like and I did, and I only showed the video of like I only showed like half of them in the video. It, like you can just go out and just kill Slay. them. It, <laughs> it's it just doesn't stop. Like I went down this like uh, under this bridge and there's like all these pillars and I'm just like cruising through. I could have went back through and caught fish on the way back, but I was just like tired already i had a i had an alligator follow me for a little while but you said you had a gator follow you yeah i would look back there he'd be like kind of following me real slow but i don't i think they're just curious from what i heard yeah. and they don't they're trying but, to eat you yeah i survived anyways but uh all right uh let's see here what is your i don't did i i may have sent you these questions i don't remember you might not saw them if they're if they're if they're if you hadn't saw these questions already sorry you can think That's about it for right. a minute What's your most uh, most memorable catch, or like maybe it was your most memorable uh, something to do with fishing? Uh, most memorable catch. Hmm. I'm trying to think of a really really good one. Um, this real quick. Yeah, last year our December highs were in the seventies. Yeah, that's the thing around here. It could you never know when it's going to get cold or warm. So fishing in the winter can be horrible or. Are fun sometimes, but but yeah, go ahead. Um, I would say probably one of the most memorable catches I've had was when I was up at Lake Erie, and caught. It was my first ever time fishing Lake Erie. Um, me and my dad had talked about going up to Lake Erie for like years and years and years because we really liked smallmouth fishing and thought they were one of the most fun fish to catch because they fought so hard. And so we went up there to uh, Buffalo, New York, fished Lake Erie, and I caught a uh, six point. No, 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 no. Five, five, eight, four, I believe it was almost six pounds, smallmouth. And it was just like to hold it and like this, like the size of it and like the proportions was just, it looked crazy. It didn't even look real. I'd never, ever, like the biggest smallmouth I'd ever seen in person before that was like, maybe three or four pounds. And this was like almost double that. And then just yeah. like, it was like a football. It was just, it was really cool. Really. Do you cool. know what the length of it was? No, but it probably wasn't that long. The fish yeah, that's what I was wondering. Like, unbelievably like short and fat. and <laughs> like 20 inches and like, probably that's, that's crazy. Like those, I watched, I'll like see these guys on Instagram, pull these fish out. And I'm like, what is that? That's a small yeah. mouth. Like, just, I've never seen anything like that. It's crazy. Lake Erie is some place. If you like smallmouth, you have to go to Lake Erie. Yeah, I, I went up to Michigan this year, but I really didn't go for smallmouth. I, we went for like some multi-species stuff, and I, and I caught smallmouth, caught some pike. But I wanted, I, I definitely want to do a trip where I'm like, 
let me go get a big one. Like my goal is to get some big ones or something like that, just to do it. But uh, but I get so sidetracked by all the little streams. Like even up there, there's streams, all kinds of little creeks oh, and streams. Yeah. Like I didn't even like... realize it was like that. And it, yeah, it was wild. But I uh I need I need to go back up. I mean I, I don't know. I could spend I could spend forever like fishing around my house. But I could I could fish anywhere. Yeah, all right. it's cool with the location yeah. you're at, you can literally fish all year. Yeah. Um, I, I've learned a lot about fishing throughout the winter and all year where you just, how to fish different times of the year, like how to fish for stuff. Also what different fish you can target at certain times where like, these are a lot easier to catch. And then these come in, then the, maybe the white bass show up and I get to go catch white bass. some. right. Um, all the crappie will move up the shallow some, well, usually last year I didn't catch as many, but cro- all of a sudden there'll be crappie. Um, what's crazy is I, I like. There's this there's river down from me. Like I'll 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 go hit it during the winter. Whenever I don't want to wade the water, I go hit the banks of this river. And like one day I'll go there and I could catch like um shell crack or like red ear, like one after another, like big ones. I'll go back the next day and there's not a single one. They like they move up shallow and then they, and then I don't know where they go. They're just gone. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so That's winter hot. is always the most aggravating to me. Like that's when I'll go out and fish two or three days and I'll make a video where I caught two fish from three days of fishing. Yep. Uh, I won't do that in the summer. Like summer I can go catch. I'll ca- I can go catch something. There's something I can go catch. Right. You know, um, yeah, out of a creek or something, ball, but, uh, that's a good one for what you were asking about how, uh, what's the most, like one of the di- most difficult things about doing YouTube, but that's a good answer right there is, going fishing several days and just not catching fish and like you have nothing to show for basically as far as video or content goes, but you've been out there spending hours and hours oh, yeah. driving and fishing and you have nothing to show for it. So like you have to catch fish basically to yeah <laughs> to I, make content. I'll do one or two. They're like vlog style, but after that you can't just keep doing those. It's like, yeah. okay, I can't, I can't just keep making these like, yeah, it was a tough day. Yeah, it was a tough day. <laughs> right. <laughs> that only lasts so long. People like yeah. people like videos where you don't catch fish, but they don't want to see you make three of them in a row, you know. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I always it always cracks me up like, oh man, I love the realistic ones. And they're like, Yeah, yeah, you will until that's all I'm putting out. Yeah. So that's funny. That 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 um, but yeah, trying to be consistent. That that's where you can trying to be consistent, putting out decent quality stuff. Like I, I've I got a couple videos saved that I'm just going to hang on to where if I have some weeks where like it's got really slow, I'm going to put some videos. They're like kind of some clips where I did catch fish that are from the summer. So I got like three or four kind of just stowed away where I'm like, I'll, I'll hang on to those if I really need them and I'll pull yeah. them out and do it. Like a, I didn't really do an intro and all that. So, so I'm like, I, I'm starting to do some of that, save a little bit of stuff, but it's all, but you might have, you, I don't know. You could have awesome days or you could have two really good days and make four videos off of it or something like that if you needed to. Um, it's just different. Okay, I got another question. This is kind of the last question and then we'll wrap up. Um, if anybody has any questions, comments, dude, f- we got 55 viewers on here right now. Like, I really appreciate this. I know this is on my yeah. second channel and um, that's what I want to do. I want to put this on here for like kind of the hardcore people that really want to watch these videos. And if this grows into I get in thousands of views off of it, that'd be great. If it doesn't, if it stays like this, I'm going to have a blast. And I plan to try to do this through the winter. That's, that's my goal. I kind of wanted to just do this live stream thing kind of through the winter, see what happens with it. Do I get tired of it? Do I get bored? Um, you know how it is doing this kind of stuff. Like sometimes you just got to try something new. Absolutely. And that, that's, for me, that's for me on this thing. I just kind of want to try something new. And you know, I, I, hopefully I'll get Fish Hawk back on here. Maybe we'll get a... a sure a trout update in the winter and um but I, but but like you said meeting different guys through youtube i like I've, i know all these guys now that fish a lot and a lot of them do youtube channels either small or bigger channels and i want to have them on here i want to talk to them and uh i think i think the viewers appreciate it and they like learning i think they like learning about how we struggle and how we do youtube just as much as i like learning from anybody whether they have a tiny channel or big channel it's all, um, it's just fun to kind of interesting. So yeah, it's kind of the behind the scenes stuff you don't get to really see all the time. And yeah, that's another thing. Like we went and fished and I had you in my video, you know, you were in the videos, like 
a few seconds. Yeah. Right. But we, nobody like we didn't really get to talk. There's not like a right. video of us talking and stuff. So exactly. I think that's pretty neat. Um, so if you have the option, so if money and time is no problem, no factor, you got all the money you need, you got all the time you need, what's your ultimate fishing trip? What you doing, or maybe what you're fishing for, or where you're going, how long it takes. I don't know. Um, I would say that uh the first one that comes to mind is probably iceland oh for for big giant brown trout i follow wow. a couple pages on instagram uh there's some guys some trout fishing guys from iceland that have some really cool instagram pages and they're posting like giant uh brown trout and like just gorgeous like scenery waterfalls uh mountains green real green grass landscape with a, just a creek or a stream running down through the middle of it just like really pretty and beautiful and iceland's just one of those countries that just every picture you see from there you're like wow like that doesn't even look real or it looks really really interesting and really cool just different so i think that would be pretty cool I, that's not an answer i ever expected to hear really I, yeah i like i don't know nothing about iceland i just know that i remember learning in school they say like Iceland should be called Greenland and Greenland should be called Iceland. That's right. But like That's I know right. it's a beautiful area, but I didn't even know that about trout and what else do they have there? Do they have like other species or are their streams kind of more like uh less fish, less species type? I'm not honestly, I'm not really sure. I just know that they have a really, really good trout fishing, um, really good trout fishing streams. I, I think a lot of them are actually sea run brown trout. If I'm not mistaken, oh, wow. maybe that's why they're so big that they might be sea run. I could be mistaken, but I'm pretty pretty sure that that's the case. Um, but yeah, just really cold, clean water. You know, not a lot of people probably. Just kind of one of those countries that's kind of rural. Maybe I mean they obviously have big cities and and that sort of thing and have an airport and all that. But there's parts of Iceland that I'm sure that are pretty remote and really really pretty. Well, I'll go look up Iceland fishing videos now. Dude, <laughs> Dude, you, that's, is there YouTube? Is there any big YouTubers or like channels? Uh, I don't know of any YouTubers that are based out of Iceland. I'm sure there there are, but another one's New Zealand, and I know there's lots of fly fishing YouTubers from New Zealand. Yeah. And they have a big trout fishing, uh, yeah. lots of trout fishing. I've, I've seen videos from that. That looks really cool. Yeah. So that'd be another good location, honestly. But the flight would be, whoo, I hear it's a long one. Where's Iceland? Like, I can't think where it's, it's at. Like, it's like if you're looking at Europe, it's like up to the left. Okay. It's like north. It's just like northwest of of Europe. Did you so see? It actually might be a shorter flight. Yeah. From, from like you know, from Virginia or Tennessee, it might be shorter than going all the way to England or wherever. Hold on. I got to look something up. Uh, did you see the, um, Hobie, uh, kayak national, uh, videos. Where's it at? Let's see if it, I can't remember where it was from. I don't see it on there now. Um, I'll have to look it up later, but I, I know some people that went to it. So did you know that there is a, um, there was a, there was a Hobie world kayak fishing tournament. Have you, have you heard about that? You see that? I haven't seen it. So that was like last month. So one of the guys that I fished with, he fished in the same like league that I fished with. He made it to this world. So there's Hobie put together a world. Like, I didn't know there was a thing. I guess they've been doing it for a few years now. And, um, somehow you qualify for it i think it's through the hobie trail have you heard about the like the hobie kayak series and their trails and stuff mm. they had one on the susquehanna susquehanna whatever so um like recently it was a big it was a big fishing tournament anyways hobie kayaks like they're they're making they're like doing huge things in like kayaking and they're pushing they have like they're pushing a lot of these big tournaments and there was a world fishing tournament and i forgot where it was like i i should know i i, I talked a lot about it but um, the fish that they went, it was over in Europe, somewhere in Europe. But the fish they fished for were pike and uh, perch and yellow perch. Like, it was so weird. I'm like, it sounds so funny. Like, they're, I'm like, I guess you can't fish for bass everywhere. You mean, like, all we, all we think about is, like, bass fishing tournaments. Right. right. So they went, they got, they had Hobies over there for them. Um, we had, like, 10, I think there's, like, 10 from every country. Or not every country, but all the countries that participated. I think we had 10 people from America. And, like, two of them are from Tennessee. 
Um, or maybe more. I think there was more from Tennessee. I at least know one or two of them were from from here, like right, real close to me. And um, they got to go over there. But I watched uh, uh, Christine Fisher. She she makes videos on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, but yeah, they're, so they're fishing for pike and yellow perch. And I was just thinking how cool it'd be just to go fish somewhere totally different. Like you don't even like somewhere where you're not. You're it's like totally different than what you're used to fishing. <laughs> I was just thinking how fun that would be and just like interesting trying to figure that out. But they're catching yellow perch on like three inch swim baits, like bass fishing for them. But they're the yellow perch are pretty big size, pretty good size. Yeah. They get huge up there. Yeah. And um I, I've seen I I have seen a lot of videos. I don't know where they're from, but it's, it may be the same type of areas like the Ire, or Iceland. But like you've seen those underwater videos where there's yellow perch and there's just hundreds and hundreds of them. They're just everywhere. Like they're just they just take up the whole waterway. It's, yeah. it's crazy to me how they're they're like bluegill over here. Like there'd be just bluegill everywhere. It's just like all yellow perch. And then there's those like big old pike coming through and stuff like that. But that's what that's why fishing to me is so interesting. Like I want to learn about every like every type of it almost. Like I haven't got down the micro. I just watched an extreme play fishing one where he was doing some micro fishing in Tennessee, uh, not far from here. But um, like I don't know if I have the patience to do that. But I think yeah. it's interesting. I just I just think it's so cool all the different little species of fish that are out there and what they do, what they eat, what they don't. Up, up. Speaking of up north fishing, there's a guy that invited me to come up north for um, in Wisconsin for the uh, sucker run. So the suckers like have a run where they go, you know, run to spawn, and they, I guess they eat like crazy as they do it, like kind of like a white bass run, right? And you can catch like three and four pound suckers on worms, and I'm like, that sounds so fun. <laughs> like I've only <laughs> caught like one or two, and that's like usually by accident or something, you know. They don't right. eat like that around here. But at that same time in the spring, you can't fish for bass there. So I'm like, eh. <laughs> I'd have, I'd hate to go all the way up there for a trip, Just and I couldn't go smallmouth fishing. But it yeah. would be really cool to go, like, to do a sucker run, and like you're sitting on they they sit on the bank or they sit and like fishing with worms and just catch like big old like big strong suckers and stuff. But um, they oh, it was in, but where uh, somebody said it was in Sweden. I don't even know where Sweden is. Uh, Sweden was where the uh, uh, Hobie series tournament was, but anyways, yeah, I, I, I thank you. I mean, I really appreciate you coming on and making the time yeah, to come you. back this week and, uh, hopefully some people will go over here and check your channel out. And I, I know a lot of people already know who you are. And I think we have a lot of crossover the same, we have a lot of the same viewership or at least people know both of us kind of similar. Cause, but I, I think it's so cool that you have your, like you have your trout fishing mainly you know your trout fishing spinning rod is like your main thing and then i have like you know i fish uh, i'll be fishing a creek that's real similar but maybe for panfish or like different types of fish and like we maybe do stuff similar but we fish for totally different fish a lot of the times but yeah. it, it, that, that's what but it's all but it's it can be fun you know and there's just there's so much different stuff to do yeah, similar have- similar uh, body of water that we're fishing, but different species and different techniques, different lures. Yeah. Uh, sometimes yeah. the same though, but it's yeah, it's really cool. So uh, yeah, yeah, and and then and there's just yeah, there's everything. There's so much different stuff to do, and that, that's one of the greatest things I hear whenever um, people will say, "I I just started trying to go and fishing for whatever," or "I just started doing this." I saw how fun it was. And I, I bet you get that too. I, I'm sure people come to your channel and like think that you have to fly fish and they're like, hey, this guy's using a spinner, right? <laughs> or a little little crankbait or something like that, and and catching trout and having fun with it. Oh, okay, I'll do that. That looks really fun and simple. Yeah, and um, I, mean, I, I think that's a big thing. Both our channels are, are real simple. Like it's fairly basic. We're not doing nothing super complicated. Nah. And and just having fun with it, and people people do enjoy seeing that. But all right, any last questions? Let me see. Did I miss anybody? Appreciate everybody coming on here. I'm glad we got this in. Hopefully it wasn't too late. Thanks, Fishhawk. Stand around. Got his information. Go check out his uh, gear. If you go to his channel, you can find his link to his rod and some lures that he uses. You got some of the – I think you got – do you have some of the lures that you like, like in the uh, video links and stuff? or? Uh, yeah. Or? There's there's some videos where I've where I've linked. The, the Fishhawk spinners are actually sold out right now. Um, I got one over there. Yeah, there's, there's <laughs> be back in october 
So they'll just, huh. they'll, uh, about another, hopefully not much more than a month away, but yeah, they're supposed to be ba- uh, back in stock by October. So awesome. I'm excited for that. Yeah. I can't wait to see, w- walk into a store and see your rise sitting there. I'll be like, yeah, I got I got years in there. <laughs> I got, I got to got, I got to get somebody who wants to do it. I, uh, oh, I actually, huh. you will. I actually talk, I've talked to a few different sort of companies. I haven't heard anything back from stuff. So I don't have anything set, but I have been talking to some people. I I, def, I definitely have some ideas and I know I can sell rods. Oh yeah. Because <laughs> I get asked about it all the time. And absolutely. I want to recommend something that I really like. I like I want to recommend a rod to people that I like I they, want to stand behind and exactly. use. But hopefully that's coming soon. But I am gonna sign off for everybody else on here. Hold on a second. Uh and I'll and I'll sign you off there. But appreciate everybody being on here. We're gonna end the broadcast. Be back hopefully next Tuesday night. I don't know who I'm going to have yet. Hopefully somebody else coming on here. Thanks for watching.